Portions of this show contain mature language and themes. Listener discretion is advised. While the story is inspired by actual events, dialogue and certain events and characters have been fictionalized for purposes of dramatization. Audible Originals presents The Miranda Obsession. Produced by Scrap Paper Pictures, Vice Studios, Wingate Media, and Audible Studios. Starring Rachel Brosnahan. Hello? Is this Buck Henry? Who's this? I'm looking for Mr. Henry. <sighs> well, whether or not you find him depends on who you are. From a reply so forbidding, I think I just found him. My name is Miranda. I'm a fan of yours. Is this some kind of prank call? That's surprisingly self-deprecating, Mr. Henry, to hear the word fan and think oh, prank. I, did did Richard put you up to this? Let me start over. I got your number from a mutual acquaintance. Who? Who? You're not even letting me get to the part where I fawn over you and tell you how much your movies mean to me. Do you really want to deny yourself the gratification? Which movies? The Graduate is one of oh, the funniest. Yeah, yeah, everybody says that. If they say it, it's probably... Everybody the loves The Goddamn Graduate. And Catch-22, and Heaven Can Wait, and I just loved First Family. Uh, nobody loves First Family. I did. <laughs> yeah, what did you love about it? I thought it was funny. Knock-knock jokes are funny. Bugs Bunny's funny. And I thought it had something to say about the absurdity at the heart of American politics. You chose an absurd frame to expose that absurdity, which is something not everyone understands. Critics hated it. <laughs> you know what they said? Mm -hmm. Any episode of MASH, Taxi, or The Muppet Show has more laughs and pathos per minute than this impeachable farce. The Muppet Show, maybe. You can't beat The Muppet Show. I'll take or leave the rest. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, wait. Who are you exactly? Miranda. Miranda... <laughs> And you know somebody who knows me, so what, you just thought you'd give me a ring? Yes, but that's not why I called. I know lots of people who know lots of people. Here's the thing, Mr. Henry. I've been watching your movies alone at night. Most nights. And your kind of funny is a little bit sad. And, well, that's my kind of funny, too. And I started wanting to talk to you. Sometimes you get the feeling that you know somebody else's secrets, and they know yours. And then you just want to reach out across the night and say hello. You know, it's kind of late. Of course. I'll let you go. No, no wait, wait, uh, uh, wait a second. I wasn't saying that you should go. I just... So what, are you some kind of um, like film critic? No, I actually enjoy movies. So you're an actress? Absolutely not. You're a young woman who got my number and you're not an actress? You couldn't pay me. I don't no. intend to. So what, you some kind of failed actress? So far I have succeeded at never becoming an actress. <laughs> <laughs> and why won't you tell me who gave you my number? A friendly omission. An omission is the first step towards a lie. An omission is an omission. A lie is if I tell you it was, say, Paul Schrader, oh, for example. Wait, you know Paul? I do. And he gave you my number? He did not. H how do you know Paul? Mr. Henry, I think I said this, but I know pretty much everyone. Oh, well, like who? Of people that you know? Mm. Well, we certainly have Robert in common. What, De Niro? Indeed, but he didn't give me your number. Oh, and sweet Alex Coburn, I think you've crossed paths. Also wasn't him, though. Who else? Probably a lot of people. Are, are you a... Uh, pardon my... But are you an escort? Did you come to that conclusion from the mention of Paul or Robert? So you are an escort. I am not, sir, an escort. I do a little modeling here and there. You're a model. Oh, you hate actors, but you're a model. Models don't talk. We just stand very still and listen very closely. <laughs> Does Paul see Escort? If you know him, you should know. Uh, he's a complicated man. Increasingly these days. Coke can be a complicated hobby. Yeah, well, he's turned it from a hobby into an Olympic sport. Hmm. But it sounds like you know that. So, Miranda, <laughs> this person who gave you my number... Are we still back there? Are they a model? 
Mr. Henry, you're having a late night chat with a beautiful woman. You can't see me, I know. You'll just have to take my word for it. And you want to play Clue. It was the butler in the pantry with the Rolodex. What do you look like? Was this the face that launched a thousand ships and burnt the topless towers of Ilium? I'm sorry, you're quoting me Helena Troy? Dr. Faust is actually Christopher Marlowe, but you're right to identify the character. Well, you're a model who reads Christopher Marlowe, and you want to talk to me about my movies? What is the catch? What catch? What, do you want money? You know something bad about me, and, and if I pay up, you'll... If you think I'm trying to hurt you in some way, just hang up right now. I'm a suspicious guy. Indeed. In, in private. I don't like being known, in, in general. Here's the thing. If I saw you on the street tomorrow, I wouldn't know who you were. And you wouldn't know me. Isn't that divine? Is it? For a man who likes his privacy, it should be intoxicating. Name one other person you could talk to right now who doesn't even know what you look like. I, I still want to know what you look like. <laughs> Excuse me, miss. I've got an international call coming through for you from Australia. Thank you, Eunice. Well, I've got a dash. Who, who's in Australia? Have a good night, Mr. Henry. Wait, wait. Yes? Uh, that's it? Was you just going to go? If you want to hear from me again, just ask. Call me. I might. <clears throat> Hello? And he remains a night owl. Insomnia happens when you get old. Oh, you've got quite a few years to go before you can make that claim. Oh. Oh, yeah, you're a charmer, all right. And what's your excuse? You a uh, pumpkin before midnight? Girls gotta work. Modeling, you said. Modeling, I said. Stand still and smile, no? Yes, darling, but you've got to do it in a whole bunch of different places. First for the camera, then at a dinner meeting, a party, on a red carpet. Hard to imagine you with your mouth shut, at least, you know, so far. Have you been working on imagining me since we last spoke? <laughs> Let's just say you, you got a hold on my imagination. So, where are you? New Orleans. Whoa, what are you doing there? I have a place. It's good for downtime when I'm between gigs, quiet scene. And who was in Australia? Australia? Yeah, last week. Oh, Mel Gibson, sweet kid. You know him? That kid from Mad Max? He wanted my advice. Uh, what kind of advice? whether he should take a job or not. He heard the director was a monster, which he is, but sometimes you have to slay a monster to get the trophy. And you know the director. I told you, darling, I make it a point to know everybody to one degree or another. Tell me, how's our friend Paul doing? I hear he's tearing up all the hotels in my neck of the woods. Yeah, he's fine on set, but you can't leave him alone for a minute. He, he, he gets existential. Sounds like you two are close. <laughs> close. He's coming up on my heels like a freight train, I'll tell you that. He admires you. Or he's circling like a vulture, thinking the old man doesn't have much time left. Mm. You know, he called me right after he got his best picture nom for taxi drivers. This was four or five years ago. And, and do you know what he said? What? He started giving me advice. He started telling me how you got to channel your goddamn trauma, put your pain on the page, all this bullshit. And I said, you know, Paul, kid... I don't need your advice. I'm making movies. And he said, the graduate was 67, Buck. You might still have something real to say. And then he said, that little fucking asshole, or maybe you don't. He said it just like that, too. Or maybe you don't. Just because people stop listening doesn't mean you've got nothing to say. Why do they stop listening? Audiences change. They want one kind of thing, and then they want another. How do you know so much about audiences? I'm a woman, Buck. You can't walk down the street without knowing about audiences. <sighs> well, 
Yeah, maybe Paul's right. Maybe, maybe I've lost what it takes. Do you really think that's true? Sometimes it feels like every young guy I know is laughing behind my back. Somebody like you wouldn't know how it feels, but it sort of eats at you. It corrodes at you. It's hard to describe the way failure sticks to your skin until you're waking up with it in the morning and you're going to sleep with it at night and you can't seem to separate out what's you and what's your failure. I do know what that feels like. <sighs> it's impossible. You sound too young. Right after I moved to New York, everybody I met was rich. I, I, I don't want to be crass, but my family... We're an old Southern family. What, you mean rich? Well, yes. Oh, astonishingly rich? Yes, I suppose it is astonishing. Uh, what's your father do? Oh, what do any of them do? Men amass money and hand it down to other men. That, that is not what I'm talking about. I'm telling you a story about myself as a poor little rich girl, <laughs> Buck. Right, please go on. Well, these New York girls I met were bankers' daughters, lawyers' daughters, and I thought I'd be on the level with them. But it turned out they knew everything I didn't. How to dress, how to talk, how to... Just everything. I had never felt so at a loss. Were these other models? No, I, I was a student at NYU for a year, if you can believe that. I didn't go to New York to model. I just fell into it. Right, so you're rich and smart and stunningly gorgeous, is what you're saying, that, and yet you understand my utter That is not what defeat. I'm saying. If you will let me finish... All right, all right. For this whole NYU year, every time I was anywhere near those awful girls, I heard them whispering behind my back laughing at me. They, they'd make fun of me. They'd do impressions of my accent, so I lost that accent. And the clothes they mocked, I got rid of the clothes. Everything they didn't like, out it went. I tried to, to look like them and talk like them. And then they accepted you? No, they mocked me for copying them. <sighs> when modeling took off, designers started giving me clothes these girls couldn't buy. Started going to parties they couldn't even get into, and you would think I wouldn't remember their names. But you do. Of course I do. Mm. I've shot with some of the biggest photographers in the world, and I still remember the first and last names of NYU freshmen who made me feel stupid. <laughs> I want to give them a good smack for you. I tell myself just being alive on this earth is the equivalent of a good smack most of the time. You're going to have success again. Excuse me? <clears throat> you will. But you will still remember how it felt to fail. And I guess... We just balance those things as best we can. <sighs> you forgive me for asking you this, but... But why don't you have a boyfriend? What makes you think I don't? Well, I have to think that if you did, you'd be spending your night in a better way. I've spent it in a lot worse. Oh, Miranda. A model, you like my movies. Is that the screenwriter in you? Lining up all my facts on your index cards? I wish I had a few more. <laughs> I wish I knew what you looked like. Oh, it is so much more interesting when you can't see a girl, Buck. Then you just have to listen to her. Just give, give me a shoot you did. Vogue, Vanity Fair. You don't take no for an answer, do you? Rarely. I'll tell you what. On Monday, you can meet a friend of mine. On uh, Monday? I'm busy Monday. I've got an interview, as a matter of fact. Tell your friend... You won't have to do a thing. You won't be able to miss him. I don't get Ask it. him about me. But wait Good a minute. Good night, I Buck. Goodbye, I guess. <laughs> Model. Wealthy family, NYU, New Orleans. Miranda. Johnny Carson is your friend? You figured it out. God, I spent the whole goddamn day waiting for your mysterious <laughs> friend to come popping out of the <laughs> shadows. Yo, a bartender, cab driver, male model. Ah, oh, and I was sitting across from Johnny Carson doing the interview, and I thought, 
Wait a minute, she said I won't be able to miss him. And I thought, oh no, god damn it. The <laughs> camera cut to the commercial. I said, Johnny, let me ask you something. Do you know this girl, Miranda? And he got this big smile on his face. And he said, you were the funniest girl he ever met. A total riot. How'd your interview go? Ah, well, something tells me you already know. <laughs> A smashing success from all accounts. Johnny Carson? I mean, you really do know everybody. I told you. Oh, God. Well, isn't this kind of early for you? It's not even 9 p.m. Oh, I've got something tonight. Oh, a date. <laughs> Look, I want to meet you. Oh. Well. Johnny has met you. Huh? What did he say? He said you were a laugh a minute. He always had fun with you. That's all? Well, the commercial break ended, and that was that. So, can we meet? Dinner, <laughs> drinks, it'll be fun. You like talking to me, I like talking to you. Next time I'm in New York, I will look you well, up. When is that going to be? I have a few <laughs> jobs out of the country coming up. It's, it's, it's just a little hectic right now, but as soon as you I get don't, back... You don't want to meet? Of course I do. Don't be silly. You're married. Now you're really being silly. You're engaged. For your information, I'm neither. You're worried about being seen with me. Okay, that's ridiculous. Stop it, stop yeah, it right now. Yeah, beautiful young woman, a has-been older man. I'm going to hang up if you don't stop being absurd. I want to see you. And next time I come by New York, which shouldn't be terribly long, you can take me somewhere thrilling for a drink and dinner. So you're really going to meet me? Dinner. You can tell me where. You tell me when. Okay. Well, I have a quick trip to Paris, and then a fitting in Rome, and then a shoot in Rome, and then I should be back here uh, the next month, let's say, month or two. Oh, or two, huh? Uh, one ages <laughs> out of my profession very quickly. You take all the work you can. Yeah, which magazine did you say you were shooting for oh, in Rome? Buck, darling, I've got a dash. No, okay, I was just but digging. But you be good so until we chat again, no, no, hang okay? on, hang on, Miranda. I can take a Th hint. There is a car here for I me. Won't, I won't go. ask you any more questions. <laughs> oh, I... I thought, look, I push things sometimes too far. You do, but I was telling you the truth. <clears throat> Check your mail this week. My mail? Sweet dreams, Buck. I was wondering when I'd hear from you again. It's been a busy week. Ten days. But who's counting? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> and I sent you a token of my affection. I got it. And what did you think? You're very beautiful. That's all? It's a striking picture. Well, you asked for an image. I picked the most striking one I could. Is that your car? Indeed. Oh, you drive a red Corvette, huh? Very quickly. <laughs> and you, you, you must know the photographer well. Why do you say that? You know, the way you're laughing at the camera. He's an old, dear friend. I, that looks like California? Yes. <clears throat> it was my first time out there, actually. This was a few years back. He'd just taken me for oysters on the beach, which was the first time this southern girl had ever eaten an oyster. And as we were coming back from the restaurant, I reached the car and looked over my shoulder, and he was standing in the sun with his camera pointing That's straight at That's not your photo. Me. Excuse me? I know that isn't you. Buck. I showed the picture to an old friend of mine. Um, I said, look at this girl I'm talking to. And he said, oh, well, that would surprise me a hell of a lot, old man. That's supermodel Christy Brinkley. It's not what you think. <sighs> Then what is it? You asked me for a picture. I sent you the best one I could find. That's it? Darling. I asked for a picture of you. And I sent you a picture that I liked. Of someone else. What does it matter what I look like? We know each other in ways that are were, more than... Were you laughing at me the whole time? Buck, no. Were you just, is this some joke? This whole thing? This 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 whole time you were just playing How a trick? How could you think that? I thought we'd gotten to some real we fucking... We have. I've, the things I have said to you. You misunderstand entirely. No, I don't think I do. 
I don't think I do. Oh, oh, look, Buck, don't take all of this so seriously. If you've seen one beautiful woman, you've seen them all. I, I don't look much <laughs> I, different from Christy Brinkley you, if you, you squint. You do right. think this is funny. I spill my guts out to you, this sad old man. And I've never once thought that about you. <sighs> You tell me something real. Who the hell are you? Really? You're missing the entire point. Pardon me, miss. Senator Kennedy on the line for you. I'll be right with him, Eunice. <laughs> You've got Senator Kennedy calling you? I've got a dash, darling, but please don't be so... No, I don't care if God himself is on the other line for you. I'm not done with this conversation. Now, who the fuck are you? What's your deal? Where did you get my number and, and, and why? I gave you a picture because you asked for it. Because you kept asking for it. You said you didn't take no for an answer, so I gave you a sort of yes. But perhaps in the future, you should learn how to take no. You might be happy. Oh my God, you listen here. I'm gonna fuck. Exactly who you are.